This Wednesday, the 18th of October, there are going to be 283 new international protection applicants landing here at Brafey, at the what was the events and sports centre here at Brafey House. Now, although we've been looking for this information for over six weeks now, we've sent emails to Mayo County Council, to the management at Brafey House, and also to the Roderick O'Gorman's department, uh, that information hasn't been forthcoming. We just heard over the weekend, on Saturday in fact, uh, that this was the case. The department have got in touch with representatives of Mayo County Council and Donna Sheridan actually posted it on her Facebook page. So we get a couple of days notice that there are going to be 283 international protection applicants arriving here in Brafie. Now, since 2022, Ireland has taken in and accommodated over 25,000 international protection applicants. And of that number, we know that over 60% of them have arrived here with no documentation. And we've been asking this question for a while now. Why would you destroy your documents on the way to a country that was going to look after you? Unless, of course, you had something that you were trying to hide from your, from your background. I think it's safe to say that a certain percentage of this 60% of people who destroy their documents uh, are coming from a criminal background. They may have uh, involved in serious crime, maybe even murders, rapes, who knows? So with that being the case, that over 60% of those 25,000 people have destroyed their documents, we can say that of the 283 people that are going to land here in the next couple of days, if we're wor working off the same percentages, that would be about 170 people that would be landing here in Brafey that arrived here having destroyed their documentation for whatever reason we don't know. As well as the international protection applicants landing here, obviously we have the Woods Hotel, which is now a Ukrainian refugee centre. And just to remind people as well that we're going to be objecting to the renewal of their liquor licence on the 14th of December in Castlebar Court, so come along. Um, Ireland has taken in and accommodated over 94,000 Ukrainian people since this uh, war with Russia started. Um, and Ukrainian people are given all the benefits that there are here in Ireland. A lot of the time there's not even means tests, tests done. Um, just with the budget we heard that there was an additional 2.5 billion set aside for uh, Ukrainian people in 2024. So between, so if you take into consideration from 2022 till the end of 2024, that's 5.5 billion euro uh, that's, um, that, that, that's been put aside for Ukrainian people fleeing war. It seems to be that there's an endless supply of money for Ukrainian people fleeing war or for international protection applicants arriving, for anybody that's arriving here. Uh, and compare that to how the Irish government are treating Irish people. Just to give you an example, I know one Castle Bar man here who was, uh, who's been homeless for a couple of years. He was actually sleeping rough outside the county council a couple of months ago for a few weeks until they moved him along. But it's very difficult for him to get any sort of decent accommodation. As I say, he's homeless for three years now. He's moved around from B&B &B to B&B &B anywhere around the county. He told me there that he contacted 10 different B&Bs and hotels with the vouchers that are the accommodation vouchers that are given from Mayo County Council. And he said of the 10 places he contacted, only one of them were prepared to take him in and only for, uh, for a short period of time, not for, for long term, only for short term. And so that's just to, to compare how some, some of our Irish people who are homeless and on housing lists are being treated compared to if you're a, a Ukrainian flea in war or an international protection applicant, um, you know, it's quite obvious to see the difference in how these, these people are being treated. Finally, I just want to mention a few bits from last week's Mayo County Council meeting. Um, Michael Kilcoyne and Peter Flynn mentioned the fact that we don't have a designated head, head of housing here in Mayo. We haven't done for over six months now, which is crazy with all that's going on in housing. Um, we only have Tom Gilligan, who people probably know at this stage, he's a director of services and he's filling in but we don't have a designated head of housing. Peter Flynn also mentioned his motion, which we're still waiting to hear back from. It was a motion that he put in, um, I think it was back in July, maybe in August. He was meant to get word back in September. It's now October. Last week at the meeting, he was told that um, it should arrive any in the next couple of days. We're a week later now, and I haven't heard anything about it. But just let me read the motion. Considering the disproportionate number of refugees in Mayo presently housed in traditionally tourist accommodation and occupying industrial buildings and student accommodation, that the Chief Executive of Mayo County Council undertake a report to evaluate the impact of County Mayo's ability to support employment, encourage enterprise, deliver critical services, and maximise investment in the county. So it's going to be very interesting to see what comes back in that report. However... I thought it was going to be very interesting, but when this was put to the uh, put to the board of Mayo County Council the other day, Joanne Grehan, who's the Director of Services for Enterprise, Community, Economic Development and Tourism, said that the data is light. The data is light on that. So I don't know what we're going to get in that. So we're still waiting. We're months waiting for that report. Uh, 
Annie Mae Reap, counsel from Ballina, uh, brought this up with Tom Gilligan. She said that there are rumours of more refugees being moved into Ballina, and she asked Tom Gilligan to confirm if this was true, stating that councillors need to be informed um, about new people being moved into our communities. Tom Gilligan said that he doesn't like to comment on rumour and said that he would talk to Annie Mae Reap in private after the meeting. So we don't know what was said in that conversation. We don't know if that's true or not, if there are more people. Uh, as well as that, Donna Sheridan. Again, Donna is one of the good ones in there and happens to be Fine Gael. I don't mean to be giving any praise to Fine Gael here, but it just happens that two of the half-decent people in there are, are Councillor Flynn and Donna Sheridan. Um, Donna asked for an update on the numbers of Ukrainian people coming into the county. Now, they used to be given these figures on a weekly basis, but since um, since July, the council haven't been given any updates on the number of Ukrainian people coming into the county. So when Tom Gilligan uh, was asked about this, he said that the figures could be could be provided, but that they come with a serious health warning as some of the numbers coming out aren't accurate. So. Michael Kilcoyne, independent councillor Michael Kilcoyne, jumped on this uh, and responded by saying that if the department are giving out incorrect figures, that this is uh, very worrying, which it absolutely is. So if that is the case and the department are giving councillors inaccurate figures about the numbers of people coming into the county or into the country, in fact, do you think that those numbers are being underreported or overreported? I can pretty much guess that they're being underreported and that the numbers were actually uh, coming in are much bigger.